Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I am so, so excited. Uh, welcome to our exclusive team training with the one and only JP Walken. So I don't want to waste any time. I'm going to go ahead and get myself out of the way and bring to the line. This young lady is the number five income earner worldwide in planet marketing she wears the ruby ring signifying earnings of a quarter of a million dollars annually in residual income she is a founding director a six-figure maker maker it is my privilege and honor to introduce to you all the one and only ms jp Watkins. ms jp have you made it to the line with us I'm trying to unmute you. Let me unmute everybody. Hello, hello, hello. There you go. Hi, JP. Thank you so much for. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. Awesome. Hello. Hi. Well, thank you so much, JP, for taking the time to meet with my organization. You have no financial ties to us. Um, tell, tell me why you agreed to do this for me. <laughs> well, one thing, one, and one hand washes another. Um, <laughs> you were so gracious to speak with my organization last week and they loved you. Um, you gave some really great practical training information and it was so awesome. I remember you getting started uh, in this thing. I remember you, you know, coming up as a one star two and three. So I've watched your journey, Tanisha. I am so proud of you. Um, I am definitely cheering you on. So you just have my heart. <laughs> Aw, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. So JP, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, we have a lot of new business partners um, on, on, in my organization, and some of them have not met you yet or have heard your story. So if you could please just tell us who is JP Watkins and how, do you get, how did you get started in the business? Oh my goodness. I was 20 years um, in corporate America, Tanisha. I was in property management. Um, I did everything from leasing apartments to being a property manager. Um, and it just was a, a hamster wheel going nowhere. I made millions of dollars for my owners, uh, but I was very um, tired. I was exhausted. I wasn't making very much money. I was traveling around for them. And I started to think to myself, do I want to do this for the next 20, 30 years? And as you speak things, words are so powerful. I began to say, I don't want to be here. Well, I walked into work in 2014 and they fired me. So I got exactly what I spoke into the universe. <laughs> that was a pink slip. But really, Tanisha, I don't believe in accidents. I believe that God was moving me to a place to truly be in purpose. And that's why I know that you have a purpose. You're touching thousands of lives. And there are thousands of more people attached to even each and every one of us has a purpose. Each and every one of us is on assignment. Um, if we truly understood the magnitude of what's going on here. So initially, I thought I just need to pay my bills. I just lost my job. What am I going to do? I played with the industry of network marketing for several years. But when I was fired, I began to truly see it as a career. I began to really take it seriously. And um, I look for a really good mentor. And and that was Mr. Donald Bradley. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And then here we are. Um, what is that? We always hear about these travel parties, and I know that um, yourself and your organization, especially with Director Tiffany McIntosh, you guys are really, really big with travel parties. Why are they so important, and what has it done for your organization? Oh, my goodness. Um, travel parties are the lifeblood to our business. Um, one of the things that I'm impressed about is that you've built an online empire, which is tremendous, and you've held it together. Um, you not only bring people in, they stay. But what we found is that most people um, really don't stick and stay until they build relationships with you. And so the best way to show people, they say people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Well, once you meet someone, just say we were dating online, you know, <laughs> everybody has heard of dating online. Well, 
at some time you got to come offline and meet the person, right? And that's what travel parties are like. It's like, okay, you can court someone, but you got to get to know them. And when you get to know people having those grand openings, every business needs a grand opening. So if I get you involved, Tanisha, I'm coming to your home. I'm coming to you, number one, to show you I care. I want to show you that I want to help you to work. And if I'm not in your city, I'm going to do a Zoom for you. And I'm going to have you have a travel party at your friend's house. And then we're going to plug up uh, the Zoom and everybody's going to see my face. And I'm going to be there doing the travel party for you virtually. So whether you live in their city um, or not, um, the travel party shows that new recruit that they have support. And travel parties help you to recruit. They're duplicatable. You can add people to your organization. So it's twofold. Awesome. Awesome. Which segue, segues into my next question, tap rooting. What does it, we hear about it, but what does it actually look like? And what is the conversation that you're having with people? You, okay. I'm sorry. Repeat that. Tap rooting. What does it look like when, when you say you're tap rooting and what is the conversation that you're actually having with people as part of the, the tap rooting process? Well, tap rooting is very important. If people want to make, you know, five, 10, 20,000 and above, um, you're going to have to learn the art of tap rooting. If you want to build an empire, if you're looking at that six figure ring, you got to learn to tap root because it cannot just be the first level that you sponsor into this business. You cannot just work with your front line. The front line is important, but you've got to reach around and you've got to drill deep. Nine times out of 10, you probably are the sharpest crayon in your box. Um, you know, you're going to have to be the aggressor. If you guys read the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, they talk about something that we need to master as builders and leaders, and that's called the big mo. Uh, momentum is something that's hard to attain, but easy to lose. Every one of us needs to learn how to create momentum. And the only way you create momentum is working from below, driving it from below. So as I have your travel party, Tanisha, I'm looking in the room for who's sharp in the room around you. Your cousin may be the deal. See, Tanisha, some people are bridges and some people are builders. You may be a bridge to your cousin who's the builder. But if I don't have that travel party, I don't know. So once I have that travel party or once I, you know, ask you to speak to your top three or I tell you, put me on the phone with your go-getters, however we do it, I'm asking you to connect me to your network. See, people don't understand. You don't have to go to the cold market as quickly as some people do. You have all that you need in your war market. Your war market could be two, 300 people. Guess what? They're my war market too now because I'm going to tap root through you and I'm going to get to know the people that you know. So your, your war market really never runs out, Ms. Burke. Awesome. 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 So my next question is how important is it for new business partners to be coachable and consistent? <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is everything. I think everybody on the line um, would love to make money. Let's be honest. Let's just be real. We're not here to hang out. I hope not. I hope everybody is here to make some money. And the reality is, is that network marketing is a different kind of non-traditional way to make money. But it's great because you have the power to do it your way, in your own terms, the way you want to do it. But you, you can make money part-time, you can make it full-time, but you can't make it sometime. I hope somebody wrote that down. You can do it part-time, you can do it full-time, but not sometime. So what do I mean by that? There must, you are the driving force. I do a training and you saw me do it, the jungle and the zoo. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a change of mentality. When we show up to work every day, I like to call corporate America the zoo. And the reason I call it the zoo is not to be degrading to corporate America. I was there 20 years, but zoo animals are fed every day. And whether, you know, they like the food or not, the, the zoo has to feed them or they will not be compliant with animal laws. <laughs> right. And so, you know, the zoo animals have to be fed. Now, in corporate, you have to earn a paycheck if you do the hours. But in the jungle, 
There is no feeding unless you kill it. Unless you hunt, you're not going to eat. And so I always tell people, you're in the jungle now. And if you don't go out there and get it, you're not going to eat. And so you got to be, you got to see yourself as, you know what? I am in beast mode now. Um, I am the hunter and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to build a network. And, you know, when Mr. Bradley showed me that matrix and those $4 bills, I made up in my mind, Tanisha, I said, you know what? I'm going to put a thousand people in this business. I don't know how, but that was my initial goal because I'm thinking $4 bills times a thousand. I just lost my job. I need about four grand to replace my income. Well, Tanisha, my goals were small in comparison to the other hunters because I went after hunters who could hunt just as good as me. And I got Philip Rollins in the, in the hunt. I got Tiffany McIntosh in the hunt. I got Cindy Brueggemann in the hunt. Um, and so when I got these people in the hunt with me, now the team is 8,000 strong. You know, because now we're all hunting together as a pack. And we understand that if we don't go out there and get it, it won't get got. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. That is the truth. Um, talk to us, uh, Director Watkins, about the importance of duplication. Oftentimes I hear, you know, when I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coachings with my team and they talk about, well, you know, my person isn't doing this and my team's not doing that. Um, you know, they're not duplicating the process. H how do you get duplication in your team? Duplication um, is really systematic, being systematic. And one of the things that the reason why I've invited you to Dallas to speak to the, the Texas group is because you have a system. There is a system online and there's a system offline. The four steps to success. Um, anytime you look at billion dollar corporations like McDonald's, if you look at Burger King, if you look at Popeye's Chicken, um, these people have the same recipe in Little Rock, Arkansas, as they have in New York City. You're going to get two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun, right? Not a brioche bun. We're not selling McRibs, McCornbread, and McNeck bones. That's not what's going on. You have a basic system, fries on the left. Uh, shakes on the right. And, and that's the reason why McDonald's is a billion dollar empire because they kept it simple. They're simple. That's why teenagers run these big million dollar McDonald's corporations. What are people duplicating in us? That's the question we have to ask ourselves, Tanisha. When, when people join the team, what are they duplicating? What are you teaching them? Uh, or are you teaching them anything at all? So when people get started, the first thing I tell them to do we're going to learn the four steps to success. You need to learn how to make a list. Learn how to properly invite. Categorize your people with chance. Let's have your launch party. Let's have a launch. Let me show you how to prospect online. I mean, there's some basic things that every single new person should learn and go through. Um, you know, and the company shows us to plug in. You know, the company says, come to Super Saturdays, come to your weekly meetings, um, get registered for a convention. Uh, there are just some things that, if, and I tell people, you may not want to be successful, but tell me your goal. And once people say, out of their own mouth, Ms. Watkins, I would like to make two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month. The first thing I'm going to say to them is, Ms. Burke, this is how you got to do it. And if you don't follow what I'm telling you to do, don't look for the income. Don't look for the result because I can't guarantee what I don't do myself. And that's why coachability is so key is because if somebody has done a thing, they can teach it in most cases. Um, if somebody's gone gold, they can sh certainly show you how to go gold. If someone has gone, um, you know, one star director, they can show you how to go one star. If they've gone to, so right now, Ms. Burke, you're a three star director. You have the authority and the documentation to show anyone how to get to three star director. And that should not be questioned because you've already done it. And so that's one of the things that people have to respect is documentation beats conversation. And, and in order for all of us to get where we want to go, that's why I follow Donald Bradley. He's a millionaire. I'm not. I'm a thousandaire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be a millionaire. 
<laughs> you are well on your way for sure. And I we're, know we're it's, halfway there, Ms. Burke. We're halfway abs there. Absolutely. Absolutely. It is definitely going to happen. Uh, a question from the team. How do you respond to a business partner who refuses or can't run the play? Mm. Oh my goodness. You don't do anything with that person. You, 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 okay, let me compose myself. <laughs> you go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. Mm -hmm. No one is your employee. No one is your child. And you know what? Let me just say this. I say that because of the experience. I've been in network marketing, Ms. Burke, 10 years. I've been in travel for five. And so I speak from a place of experience. Um, initially, I tried to drag people. I tried to make people listen. But people have, I remember Miss Ima. Some of you know my mom. She's an ambassador and she's a one star. And she said to me, people have a boss from nine to five. They don't need one from five to nine. Mm. And that was the best bit of advice she told me. Because we can't drag people. If people are not running the play, move around. That's why we tell you, go 2020 before you even think about directorship. Here's why, Ms. Burke. Six people will be DOA. This is the formula. I hope someone's writing this down. Six people will be DOA. DOA means they quit, you don't know why. They're either gonna cancel or quit, but they're out of here, six. Six people will incubate. What does that mean when they incubate? Incubate means they'll pay their $60, but they're not gonna do anything. They, they're gonna stay active and they're just going to kind of book travel every now and then or do nothing. They're just gonna remain active. That's 12 people that are going to do nothing. So most people think this business isn't working, but here's what we do know about 2020, six people typically build. So when you have six people that typically build, what happens is, is that when you have six people that are building, um, you have something to work with. And out of those six people who are building, you have one to two superstars. And those are people who are going to go gold. Those are people who are going to go director. So we're looking for three people out of 20 to go gold. That typically takes you one star director. Now, if out of 20 people you don't get that, then you go 30-30 or you go 40-40. But what you don't do is fight with anyone. <laughs> you don't drag anyone. <laughs> you don't keep negotiating with people who want to lose. There are some people who tell you out of their mouth, I want to win, and they don't. Ms. Burke, their actions show you louder than their words. Mm, that is the truth. That is the truth. How realistic is it for someone to become a top income earner without going to convention? You said how easy? <laughs> Could it even happen? Is it possible no. to be a top income earner if you are not at convention? How important is convention? No, you cannot. Um, they're, they're just some non-negotiables. If you want to make big money in the industry of network marketing, here's what I need you to understand is that your first year you survive. Period. You're a rookie. And if you look at the police force, they have rookies. You look at the NFL, they have rookies, right? Um, they're, they're, your first year is your learning season. Your first year to two years, Tanisha Burke, you are a freak of nature. The way that you came out of the gate swinging, you're just different. Um, most people don't come out as early as you with, you know, I didn't. My first couple of years, I definitely bumped my head a lot. And so everyone needs to give themselves permission to be rookies. Give yourself permission to be an amateur. Give yourself permission to learn. And as an amateur, as a rookie, as a intern, as an apprentice, you are to learn as much as you can. And, and with the expectation, it's going to pay off. I mean, you look at interns, doctors do residency. They don't make money like, you know, after, as a resident, they make half of what real doctors make, right? That's the same concept over here is that people when you pay your dues that's when you make the money but if you don't show up and learn anything yes you can be present for 10 years but if you never showed up to convention showed up to meetings showed i mean and here's the good thing miss burke you can compress time the person who plugs in more the person who shows up more can actually run circles around the person who's been here three years who does nothing so there's a way to compress time, but the reality is 
whoever is the best student. This is a game of duplication. And if you don't know what to duplicate, how in the world are you gonna teach? I am a master teacher because I show up. 10 years, I've been you know, riding the bike. I do the presentation every single day. Somebody's getting the presentation. I'm doing three-way calls. I'm doing personal development. I am, a, I am a professional network marketer. And that is because I have committed myself to that process. I never took it lightly. Um, there were times in the beginning, I didn't really understand the magnitude of what this industry could do. And, you know, um, I would plug in, but I wasn't as committed. I would say for the first five years, I, I didn't understand total coachability. I didn't understand total commitment. But five, the five years that I said, I'm going to make six figures, where you are, Ms. Burke, I did not miss anything because I understood that the top income earners have a different level of commitment and dedication. Mm, that is true. That is true. Which leads me to my next question. I often have, you know, right now you're part-time in the business. I mean, full-time in the business. I'm full-time in the business. But for someone who is part-time in the business, let's say they work a nine to five, what should their day look like? What type of activity should they be doing to work their business? What, prospecting. Prospecting and showing the plan. Prospecting and showing the plan. Those are the main things you should be doing is prospecting, whether it's online or offline. Everyone should have their black cards. Um, if you don't have your black cards, get them. And then you also have a virtual card um, that's on your app. But prospecting, staying in phase one, it's interesting because sometimes we get three, six, nine people, we say we have a team. <laughs> no, it is not a team at this time. You, until you go one-star director, you don't want to stop going first, frontlining. Yes, you want to make sure your team, you know, is informed about things, but having coaching sessions when you have three, six, nine people is going to slow you down because most people are going to make excuses anyway. So the best thing for you to do is to, Go fast, go frontline, continue in phase one, prospecting, prospecting, prospecting. That should be your goal, is to master the art of recruiting. And once you master the art of recruiting, then you can master some of the other things like reach around and tap root, um, duplication. But if you don't master the first step, which is you being the master recruiter, you can't teach it. Mm -hmm. Do you recommend uh, with that book, The Magic of Compound Recruiting? Uh, not in the beginning, because most people, it, it's going to go over their head. Um, okay. Yeah, it's, it's deep. Until a person is 2020, they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't. I didn't understand that book initially. I was like, this book, because this book is for master builders. And so your first book is GoPro by Eric Worre, um, How to Build a Network Marketing Business um, by Jim Rohn, my first year in network marketing, Mark Yarnell, um, you know, things like um, Building a Empire by Brian Carruthers, just the basic stuff on becoming a professional network marketer and builder. And then once you get that down, the basics, then you go to the magic because the magic of compound building is a difficult read. You got to have some practical application. Then you go, Oh, that's why they said do it like this. I got it. And then you'll start really understanding that book, but that book is next level. So once you get through like GoPro building an empire, my first year, then as you go 2020, then read the, the magic of, of compound recruiting. It will make more sense. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much. Um, can you explain the importance of market shares? Oh, market shares. Um, hold on one second. Market shares mean, Miss Burke, I am building outside of my city. I am building outside of my city. Um, we all know that. And how many city, How many countries are you in right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm in like 45 of the 50 states. Um, and I do have, I have some UK people. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm definitely trying, you know, when you're on social media, the beauty of social media is that it does allow you to get into different markets pretty easily. 
Well, I can tell you that that's smart. And that's why your team is several thousand people um, is because you're not just building in your backyard. And I, I have people that are in certain towns or villes and they're like, oh, nobody in my city is progressive minded. And I'm like, you got to get outside of your city, get market share in Houston, get market share in Atlanta. Right now I'm building in Atlanta. Why? Atlanta's hot. It's the hub. It's where Mr. Bradley is. Um, so you definitely want to get outside. You've got to capture, like I have 2000 people in the UK and it's just awesome. I've been to London twice now to support them. Um, I wouldn't mind getting a piece of Mexico and market share just really means stability. If there is a natural disaster in Houston, Texas, um, which hurricane Harvey came through and, um, you know, if I were only building in Houston, my business would have been on hold for two months because the city was underwater for a week and mm -hmm. everything was really brought to it. What if there was a blizzard in Ohio where you live or Maryland, um, if you were underwater in, in Florida? So, you know, sometimes natural disasters can bring your business to a halt um, if you don't build outside of your city or things just happen. So market share means that you are spreading around, you're, you're balancing your network, you're expanding in different areas, and you got to go see them. I have people saying, Ms. Watkins, I want to recruit in Mexico, and I'm, and I'm saying, that, that's great, but are you going to raise the children that you have? Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to recruit people in California. Awesome. When are you going, Ms. Watkins? When are you going? So don't ask me to go somewhere you don't want to go. You want to recruit these babies? Go raise them. I always tell people, if you have children, change their diapers. Mm, right. <laughs> you know, because if I, if I recruit somebody, I'm going to support them. That's why I'm very picky about the people I recruit. Because if I'm going to recruit them, I'm going to see about the people. That's just the way I roll. I will drive. I've driven 12 hours, 16 hours. If I didn't have plane fare or if I wasn't able to fly, I have driven to go launch people and support people if I knew that the people were going gold builder above. If I knew they were serious and they were going to do it, I would support them. And if somebody in your organization has gone bronze, silver, or gold, and you haven't seen them, you probably need to go see about that person um, because they're showing you, they're raising their hand that they're serious. So go out there, get the market share, but also be careful because you don't want to get market share that you're not going to support. Awesome. 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 Here's a question from the team. How do you motivate your team when you have individuals in your top three spots that seem to be focused on other priorities? Again, you don't motivate anyone. The best way to motivate people is going to the next level. And that's what my mentor told me. He said, Jay Pizzle. He used to call me Jay Pizzle. He said, Pizzle, the best way to motivate your team is to go to the next level. Because when you promote without them, they go, oh, she didn't need me. <laughs> mm. You know, and, and sometimes people feel like, oh, I make or break you. And they truly feel like, why does she keep calling me? Why does he keep calling me? Um, and, and you got to show people better than you can tell them. Show them that running with you is a good idea. Show them that you're going to continue to be documented. Um, Tiffany McIntosh, did, I, I offered her my first position in my matrix. She said no. She was working on a different project at the time. Philip took my first position. He said, yes, I ran him up a poll. And when Philip got his six figure ring, it was all on Facebook, uh, Ms. Burt. And so uh, of course I showcased it all on my wall and everything. And Tiffany called me, you won't put another ring on anybody else's finger, but mine. <laughs> you know, sometimes you gotta do it for, your, do it for <laughs> the doubters. <laughs> do it for the doubters so that the doubters can go, wow, you really did do it. So those three people that are occupying those spaces, you got to be successful because now you got to show them, okay, I was going to do it with or without you. I wanted to do it with you, but since you don't want to do it, I'm going to do it anyway. And that's just how it's got to be. You can't worry about those top three people. What that should teach you is be more selective, be more, you know, selective. Don't put anybody in your business who is not serious. And sometimes people say they are and they disappoint you. But there's nothing you can do about that. One of the great things about Mr. Bradley is the matrix compresses. And so, you know, those top three spots in your matrix, you're still going to get paid. Um, yes, it's, they're not helping you to drive the matrix and really run up the numbers, but 
the, the matrix will look through those three people and pay you as long as somebody's down underneath them. It, it doesn't penalize you. And that's the beauty of, di of dynamic compression. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love our matrix. I actually did a training um, on understanding the matrix because it is super important that people understand how they make the money. Where is the money coming from so that they can focus and, and really maximize that. Um, tell me, what does the future hold for JP? Where do you see yourself going with this, this opportunity? Oh my goodness, millionaire status for sure. Uh, that's why I'm here is millionaire status. Millionaire status, $83,333 a month. Um, 20 years in corporate America, that was never a reality. And now it is. So I'm very, very excited to have the opportunity, not only to free myself, but thousands and thousands of families. Like I said before, I don't believe in mistakes. I believe that every single one of us have, um, our steps are ordered. I believe that every single one of us has an opportunity um, to help other people. And it is true, service to many leads to greatness. And every single one of us has the opportunity to be great, but how many people are you gonna serve? And so Tanisha, my charge is to help more people, serve more people, and that's what the future holds for me. I would love out of the 100,000 people that Mr. Bradley has said will be a part of Planet Marketing in 2020, and I'm sure we'll meet that goal way before, but I will have 25,000 of those people. Mm. And, you know, I have already committed to him. One of the things that I've learned in this industry is if we make our goal about our upline, make our goal about someone else, um, people should be asking you, what do you need to go four star? How can I contribute and make this a four star organization? Because when you help to build the bridge, you can now walk over it. So once I help to make this a legacy company, once we all help this company go into momentum, then guess what? We all ride the wave. We all walk across the bridge. But if I don't help, you know, my upline, if I don't help my partners, if I don't help Planet, then there's no bridge to walk over. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, I'm not that familiar with your previous experience in network marketing. Have you ever experienced momentum before? Like, what does that actually look like? I, I have. And it's, it's pretty interesting, pretty amazing. Um, it's pretty, yeah. Momentum. I was in a company called Organo Gold and, um, we, I saw momentum happen in that company back in 2008, nine, somewhere around there. But I was so new to network marketing that I didn't understand timing and I didn't understand momentum. And so I was kind of observing and I was a professional clapper. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't understand I should have got my boogie board in the water and ride the wave. I wasn't, my work ethic was not what it should be. I was not having those travel parties and we called them coffee jazz mixers. <laughs> um, I, I should have had more of those. I should have exposed more people. The more buckets you have, you can get more water. And so I should have laid more buckets out there. So anybody who's under the sound of my voice tonight, understand that the more people you expose right now, the more people that are in your business, when momentum hits, and it will, you get a chance to ride it um, and double your money. I mean, that's what momentum does. It doubles your money because now when the company is a household name, now when it's hot in momentum, everybody wants to get in under somebody. So when you have those people in play, they're going to get under your team. That's what momentum does. I got it. So you're basically saying the people that we are exposing to the business now who are saying, not now, I'm not ready. Once momentum hits, they're going to say, oh, I think I'm ready now. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's, That's exactly cool. how it goes. That's exactly how it goes. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I want to take it to the team. Is there anyone who has a specific question for Director Watkins? Um, unmute your line. Please introduce yourself and ask your question. Any questions?
How you doing? Hi, Tanya. Hi, Tanya. Hi, um, Ms. Watkins. This is Tanya Lapsley Cockett from Newburgh, New York. Um, I'm interested in learning about um, how long it took you to actually become a gold builder. Um, you, Tanya, I was not new. Um, you have to keep in mind, I was um, a veteran. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so it took me an hour to go gold builder. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> we launched, we all launched um, October 26, 2016. Yeah. So I already had those applications on deck. I knew the nine people I was going in the system with. I told them on the 24th, are y'all coming in? We about to launch. <laughs> and that, Okay, so a follow-up question. And out of those nine people that you brought in, um, were they, are they still in the business? Those, those three, your three um, top no, not all, no, not all of them. In fact, my number two person came in my number two spot, went director, and because he wasn't rich quick enough, quit um, his first year into the business. And Tiffany McIntosh, who has 4,700 people, fell in his matrix a year later, and he would have been a six-figure earner by default. Wow. That's deep. Yeah. Okay. It is deep. Because okay. he took my number two spot, 4,000 people later, fell in his matrix, and he quit. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Anybody else have a question? Uh, good evening, Ms. Watkins. This is Shaheem in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Oh, my brother, you're about to pop that one star. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, the question that I have is, how do you remove or get yourself off of that emotional roller coaster once you get so close and all of a sudden your numbers start to drop it is it's it's mastering because right now you know i'm gunning for five and every day i'm losing no less than 10 people <laughs> just imagine waking up to 10 people gone every day seven to ten people attrition it's, it's like you feel like you're walking in quicksand you feel like you're walking in place and um, if you're not going to have emotional maturity, then network marketing is not for, for you. And I'm not speaking of you in particular. I know you're an officer. <laughs> so you are very emotionally um, stable and mature. But, man, it, it can definitely play with your mind. you got to have what General Orlando Moore says, mental toughness. Um, the industry of network marketing is uh, industry that you always think more people should do this more people should be into this but what takes people out is the emotion you have to have nerves of steel you have to have emotion you can you have to be almost emotionless um because every day it's something new and that's kind of why we call it the jungle because you're manipulating through the the trees through the woods um through the attacks through whatever um but just know in your mind it will happen and that's why the personal development has to trump the radio, the television, negative Ned, negative Nancy, coworkers. You got to keep your mind on, you know, Les Brown, E.T., uh, Jim Rohn. You got to inundate your mind every single day, all day with positive things to keep you grounded that, you know, this will happen for you. Mm, love it. Love it. Thank you. I have a, a, a question for you, uh, Director Watkins. When someone is in the 20, 20 yard line, what does the activity look like to help them cross from a leadership standpoint? What does that look like? You said when someone is 20, 20? No, when they're in the 20 yard line, they're mm -hmm. about to hit their next level what is the activity that the leader should be doing to help that person cross over? Um, well, if someone is in labor and they're in your team, you should be right there to help them deliver that baby. That's the only analogy that's appropriate. Um, because you got to focus. You can't be all over the place and your team is giving birth or that person is giving birth to a new baby, to a new promotion. 
So you got to be right there. Somebody's going one star. I am on them every day, right there until they're I just broke a one star just now. Um, a gentleman just broke one star in my organization, personal to me. So I'm very excited. But we, I, I've been on him, like me and him locked at the hips. Now, once he goes one star, I may move around a little bit now, help some more people. But when somebody's trying, when you're trying to get somebody gold, you got to spend some time with them. Like you got to, we call that laying down with them. Um, Tiffany McIntosh, when she launched, I was on my way to Little Rock, Arkansas. I drove 12 hours uh, from Little Rock to Ohio and I stayed in Ohio 14 days in an extended stay. And I did not leave until she was one star and she broke one star in 14 days. But I had to stay in a hotel and sit there and do presentation back to back to back to back because the frequency, there is an algorithm, there's a frequency and a rhythm called momentum you have to create and if you're the the smart one in terms of you know the presentation nobody else does how can you depend on people to pop that pin if they don't know what they're doing or talking about mm. great point great point thank you thank you does anyone else have a question go ahead and unmute your line hello hi christina hi um i'm from baton rouge and I, my question is about market shares. I'm brand new. I'm, I'm a month in. And um, before, I just heard about this. So I actually was thinking about it, but I didn't know what the name for it was. How do you go about um, getting people, you know, that's not in this uh, state with you? I mean, like I, I, I thought about people that I may know in another state and contacting them and letting them know what I'm doing and maybe they could get some people together or something like that. But do you have any suggestions on how to get people aside from, you know, meeting people on social media and things like that? You're saying how do you impact other markets? How do you get people? Yes. Okay. Like for as like market shares in, 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 you know, different states. Okay. Well, first of all, welcome, Christina. Um, you're Thank new. you. Be a student, be a student, be a student and go out there and take the shot. Stay in your warm market first. Okay. Do not try to go out there and talk to strangers yet. You're, you're not there yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. You need to first talk to the people, you know, and mm -hmm. so I started off with my mother, my sister, my grandmother, you know, my friends, and I stayed in my war market. So make a list of a hundred people and mm -hmm. categorize them with champs, people who have children, people who are homeowners, people who are um, age 25 and older, people who are yes. married and P professionals. Those are champs. Once you make that list, you go through and expose those people with the PS3. Okay, so once you have a PS3 and you get three to five, nine people on your team, then once you help launch those people, then guess what? They know other people you don't know. The only reason I have a team in London is not because I knew someone in London. I knew mm -hmm. Tiffany McIntosh. Mm -hmm. Tiffany knew Dwayne Townsend. Dwayne Townsend knew BP Koo. BP Koo knew Cindy Brueggemann. Cindy Brueggemann knew Chanel Fry. Chanel Fry brought 2,000 people from London. That's five levels deep. Wow. So you can get market share by tap rooting through people that you sponsor. But first, stay with your warm market. Everybody should start in their warm market. And then as you're out and about, you get stronger. You know, you start reading the books, going to the meetings. Now your posture is a little bit stronger. Then you can take that black card and meet people in the mall or meet people. So I never go out to prospect, but I prospect while I'm out. Yes. Um, then you go okay. on social media because Miss uh, Burke has a master social media uh, training. She shows you how to do it non-threatening. So there are people you can meet on social media based on her training. So all of that, really though, I start with the list, work your list, and then go. You know, learn the the social media training that Miss Tanisha Burke has, uh, and you'll get market share because people just are live in different cities. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Anybody? Thank you. Else? Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Ms. JP? Hello. This is Natasha from Alaska. Yes. See, Natasha's <laughs> all the way in Alaska, everybody. <laughs> I have a question. I was on the call when Ms. Burke did the script, 
I'm using the script also on still on my wall market and other people. How do you overcome, I would say, the crickets when you send it out and then your wall market or the people that you send it out to is still not responding? Okay, Miss Tanisha Burke, I think she's asking you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Natasha, if they don't respond, you just say next and keep it moving. The wonderful thing about social media is once you send someone a message, they're watching you. And you'll see the little bobblehead at the bottom that they did see that you sent them a message. They read it. But if they don't respond, it's for whatever reason. You can't make somebody respond. But the thing is, they've seen it, and they're going to be watching you on social media. So what are you showing on social media? Does your personal, personal page show that you are a travel professional, that you're traveling, that you're engaging, that you're positive? right that people are joining your business one of the best things that you can do is announce new business partners on your personal page and we have tons of them joining our our team every single day so you can go right to team lux platinum and copy and paste an announcement of a new business partner and now all of the people you sent messages to they see your business is growing without them and that's going to make them when they're ready when they're ready they're going to reach out to you Okay. Even though you copy and sharing, even if it's not on the team? Even if they're not. Let me ask you a question. If yes. I enroll my neighbor tonight, mm -hmm. is that not your new business partner too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at it like that, yes. Right? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm not on, on Director J.P. Watkins' team, but we're business partners. We're just cross line. Okay. So your announcement okay. is going to be congratulations to our newest business partner gregory smith you're not saying you enrolled him you're just saying congratulations to our newest business partner and so all the people oh. that you sent messages to they're gonna be like wow natasha's team is growing she announced like five people joined this week <laughs> maybe i should maybe i need to respond to that message she sent right it's the fear oh. of loss right oh, of okay out that makes people jump Okay. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Director Watkins. I'm Waniva Head. I'm a rising goal builder with my eye on director. Yeah. And yeah. So my question for you is regarding the travel parties. I've watched a lot of videos and paid attention to all the trainings that I can find, and they all mention prepping for the training party, but they never mention the transition from discussing travel to discussing the business opportunity. So can you tell me how you make that transition? Okay, you should, you should be doing the presentation that you um, have in the back office, which that naturally does that. So when you have a travel party, um, basically everyone is going to be in a living room with looking at a television and you're going to be standing in front of the room talking and using the presentation. Do you ever go to any meetings in your city? I do go to meetings in my city. The ones I've attended, we've not talked about travel parties yet, but I do also, I've seen the presentation, including yours, so many times. However, when I went and listened to the IntelliTravel training that discusses doing the travel parties, she doesn't mention this part of it and so i've well, not yeah. seen yeah. a travel, travel party. party you can we, can we you can call it different things travel parties pbrs which is um your per, your private business reception mm -hmm. you can call it many different things it is a home party right so, a, a travel party that intelli travel is talking about and what i'm talking about may be different okay so, but you need to have, a, you need to, not for yourself, but for your team, you should be having grand openings, showcases, PBRs, whatever you call it, that's what we're talking about. And that's where you need to be doing the presentation, period. You need to do the presentation. Everybody needs to make a decision to join or not, have some cookies and punch, shut it down. Okay, so I should have had something like that when I started yeah. too. Yes, you should. Um, and not everybody does it or knows how to do it, though. And, and that's, that's why, why I want to know. 
-hmm. Yeah, Miss Burke is, that's why she's teaching it now because she realizes that some people don't know what they don't know. Right. And now she, she understands that, you know, and that's why I had her on my call because she came on my call. I don't know how to teach social media. Mm -hmm. I don't know one thing about it, but she's the master of it. And so I'm the travel party queen. So that's why, you know, we're using each other's expertise. Like, okay, <laughs> teach my group. No, you teach my group and we'll all get to the finish line. So that's the beauty of sideline relationships is each one teach one. So what you can learn from me tonight is the art of having travel parties and it is beneficial. Continue to do what you're doing, but also launch your people um, the best way that you know how. And inbox me. If you have any questions, shoot me an inbox and I'll walk you through it. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You both are very inspiring. I'm glad to have had a chance to listen to you directly. Thank you're you welcome. so much. Awesome. One I more question. Hi, Ronnie. Hello, how are you? Awesome. Yeah, um, I just piqued somebody's interest on Facebook through one of my posts, and um, I shot a message to them in their inbox uh, saying, um, let me get your number so I can send you the information and we can you know, discuss it afterwards. And the person said, let's do a FaceTime. How would you respond to that? Do the FaceTime. Oh, and what information would you give during the, the FaceTime? Well, what you want to do is send them the preview ITA and the preview rep. Have you mm -hmm. sent that to them yet? I was getting ready to, so I wanted to ask that question first. Yeah, so just, again, stick to the Just Ask Peak Interest script. You've already piqued their interest because they saw something you posted on Facebook. So the next thing would be to send them um, the preview video. Or you can just jump right to the big picture video and say, sure, we can do FaceTime. What's a good time? What time are you available? Schedule the time and then send them the big picture video and say, you know, take a look at this video before our FaceTime and on your, you know, on our FaceTime, I'll get your questions answered. And you want to coordinate that with, you know, an expert so it's not just you on the FaceTime because if you're a new business partner, you may not be able to answer all their questions. Right. They want to speak to someone who's documented um, in the business that can validate the information you share. That's perfect. Right. And so since you're going to kind of it's going to be a three way, maybe you don't do FaceTime, but you use Zoom. This way, three people can get on there. I don't know if three people can get on a FaceTime, but you can also use a Zoom webinar to do that. OK, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. One last question. One last question. See, you see, Tanisha, my team is jumping on here asking you questions. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie and Natasha on my team. Ah, uh, that is too funny. That is too funny. <laughs> well, uh, can I tell you, uh, JP, I had someone on your team uh, schedule a three-way call with me today. <laughs> oh, dear God. We, you know what? These are my, these are my little uh, cousins, nieces, and nephews <laughs> on your team. I'm going to love them, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, no more questions. All right, so uh, Director J.P. Watkins, I truly, truly thank you from the bottom of my heart because you did not have to do this. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your expertise. I appreciate you pouring into my organization. And I just want to thank you again for taking the time to share with us um, you know, just, you know, sometimes we hear it from one person, but it's so much better when you hear it from someone else. It's just like your mama telling you don't touch the, <laughs> the stove, right? <laughs> but then when the stranger on the street tells you, be like, Ma, guess what? They told me not yes. to touch that. <laughs> they just gave me new information. No, it wasn't. <laughs> well, Miss Tanisha Burks, let me just say I am honored to be on with your team tonight. Um, they are so awesome to show up for their own rescue. So many people don't show up and they showed up tonight. And one of the things that I want, you know, your team to know is they have a gem in you. And sometimes if we're familiar with people, we don't understand their value. But what you've accomplished in going three-star director with very little to no network marketing experience is phenomenal and i just really have a lot of respect for people who come in and prove that that are the proof the evidence that network marketing is the best way um, i always tell people yes you can go 40 40 40 work 40 hours 40 years retire on 40 percent 
but we all know too many people that are living broke doing that method. It's not, you know, quit your job night, but this industry proves that people can get free. And for me and for you, we are the evidence and so many other people need to be the evidence. Um, Shaheen has to knock this thing out. Um, you know, um, Natasha, all of everybody, you guys need to be the proof that this industry works. It's not a pyramid. It's not one of those things. It is freedom. And every one of us can set ourselves free. So thank you again. I can't wait to see you Saturday. Yes. And I will see you Friday. I come in Friday morning, so I will see you. Thank you yes. everyone. Thank you team for showing up for your success. I appreciate you. I will be uploading this video um, to my YouTube channel and sharing the link in our team group. So let's be great. Let's be eagles and let's soar. Thank you everyone. This webinar is officially over. Good night.